Um, we have some cupcakes here. If anyone hasn't had one yet, you're missing out. Laurie Potmeyer brought them, which means that they are gold. Right, I am delighted to bring to the stage the team from Landis. Paul, come on up. Welcome. So Paul is going to be talking about filling gaps in uh, Teams Voice using Landis Attendant Console and Contact Center. Can I please get an enormous round of applause for Paul and the whole team from Landis. Go, Paul! Yes! Yes! Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Great to be here. Um, Landis is thrilled, I think thrilled is the right word, uh, to be one of the headline sponsors here at Commsverse this year. Uh, it has been a fantastic experience. Um, yeah, a little bit about Landis there. We love this conference. This is the second year, I believe, that we've been one of the sponsors here. We love the community here. Um, great vendors, great people, great expertise. So it's a joy to be here. And we appreciate everyone that's taking time out of their schedule to attend and contribute. Uh, we really appreciate it. So um, we're going to have some more on Landis here in a second. I just want to introduce the team that's here from Landis have myself, Wendell, and Preston. Yes, before you ask, we are all related. We are brothers, just coincidence, but uh, Wendell and Preston are over there. Um, so if you hunt down any of us, we were happy to ask, uh, answer any questions that you have um, afterwards or up at the booth. So great to have the team here. We have a lot more supporting staff back in, in Pennsylvania that is helping with support and helping to hold down the fort while we're gone. All right, I, um, we, we're very privileged to have uh, the Landis Technology CEO with us today. Um, he's gonna be sharing a few words on the Landis story, how we got here, the, the story behind the products that we're gonna talk about today. Oops. Um, so yeah, he's a fantastic person to work for. He's the vision behind Landis and everything that we do. Uh, so please welcome CEO Matt Landis. All right, uh, this morning, I'd like just to welcome everyone that's here in the audience. Some of you are familiar, either from social media or meeting in person before, and also those that are live streaming, watching on the live stream, or will watch the recording. Welcome and thank you for being with us. This morning, when I went out to my car over at the Hilton, I came to my car and there was someone there kind of caught me and he said, uh, what's going on? I'm seeing all these badges and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. There must be some kind of conference going on. And I said, well, there's a technical conference. And he kind of waited. He wanted more of an answer. Um, and he said, and I said, well, it's a Microsoft Teams conference. He said, oh, that's why all the Americans are here. And I said, is it that obvious? And he said, I guarantee you we're not profiling. <laughs> so welcome here. It's good to be here. And we'd like to just say for a few minutes, just talk about um, why uh, Landis Technologies is providing contact center and attendant console for Microsoft Teams. You know, we started in 1993 in the Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And Lancaster County, Pennsylvania is known for its farmland, it's known for its Amish, and just a rural setting. And we started there, we, uh, what we started doing is doing technical services for companies in the area and provided technical services, uh, kind of the things that you do, take care of servers, take care of networks, that kind of thing. And you know, uh, as time went on, we started growing and we a, a question came up. Uh, we were dealing with a fairly sizable medical uh, company in the area and they were wanting a network installed. And there, there was a question, what solution should we install? And at the point it was not at the, at the moment, we hadn't made a decision. There was this Novell Netware, which was a mature product. It was something everyone was using. And then there was this new kind of solution that was on the block that was Microsoft NT Server. And the question is, which should the company use? And as I looked forward, I said, you know, I know there's a mature product. It's been out there. Everyone is using it. It's going to be, you know, you probably, you know, no one's going to die if you use it. But I think the best thing for this company is to go with Microsoft NT Server. And, you know, the CFO at the time or the, uh, the, the technology guy, he's, he was really pushing back. And I had to kind of argue with him. And finally, we convinced him, yeah, go with NT 
uh, Windows NT. And you know, this has been for Lannis Technologies. I didn't know the decision I was making back then, but it has been since then, it has been a long journey of supporting Microsoft products, whether it was VB.net, uh, Microsoft Windows Server, of course we came to Microsoft Office 365 and other products. As time went along, our company kept growing and we were using Panasonic phone system and we needed to grow beyond that. And at that time, uh, a solution came out called Asterisk. It was based on Linux. And we thought, you know what? We're into software, we're selling servers, and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at this Asterisk thing. And so we implemented Asterisk as a phone system. And you know, we came from the IT side. We knew servers, and you know what? We were in for a serious crash course on FXS, FXO, TDM, gateways, PSTN, and we really learned a lot of stuff about all the, telephone, the telephony stuff. But you know, we were really, even at that time already, we were really focused on Microsoft. And we were thinking, isn't there a solution, like a Windows-based solution? And I'll tell you, at that time, when I would go to conference and say, you know what, we sell a, or, or we're, we're focused on a Windows or Microsoft Windows based communication server. It was something that you had to argue with people that it could actually work, that you could actually run communications on a Windows server. Um, so we looked at a couple solutions. We looked at 3CX, which I think is a brand that's still out there, um, still available. We started using it, but you know, we just, the, the, the stability, and actually we used it intensely, like everything we do, we, we do 100%, and we were intensely working with, actually I wrote a book on 3CX, um, and it's still out there, you can go on Amazon, and their 3CX tutorial by Matt Landis and another co-author, and um, you know, I wanna tell you something, don't write books for the money. Just this morning I got an email from Packet Publishing uh, to give my grand royalties for the last quarter, and it was $3.46. So don't get in that as a, as a money-making proposition. But only to say that everything we've done, we've done with a vengeance and with all our effort. And we weren't quite satisfied for, with 3CX. It didn't seem like it quite fit us. And we were thinking, is there a Microsoft solution? And so we started looking. And there was live communication server. It didn't seem like it quite fit that whole spread of phone system and everything people want to do. Then they came out with Office communication server, 2007 R2. And I was reading about these faraway places like Europe where they're actually implementing this as a phone system in SMB market. But we were feeling like in the US, it just didn't have all the features that we wanted. And so we kept watching. We got, got the hosted version of OCS. We were using it for instant message internally in our company and recommending it for other companies for instant message. And then along came Link 2010. And you know, that was the time when I said, we looked at it, we said, the features, there's enough. We can do this and we can implement phone system on Link 2010 server. And that's what we started doing. We started using Microsoft Link 2010 and sort of entered this world of Link. And you know, what we found out very soon is there were some gaps. It didn't do everything everybody needed to do. And even the things it maybe should have done, like IP phones, it wasn't self-evident how you get all the solutions together. And so what I started doing is, and our team, we started making notes. Uh, we started writing down like tips on how to implement Link 2010. What were the best phones? How do you make the phones actually work? How do you make the buttons work? Like on a hardware phone system, the buttons just work. You don't have to do anything, they just work. Uh, but in Link 2010, this was kind of new stuff to make it work. And so I started writing notes to myself on a blog so that when I needed to figure it out the second time around, I'd have my notes. And you know what? I found out shortly, you know, things like how to make IP phones work, um, how to make park, overhead paging, just all these kind of normal things that you do with, uh, with phone systems. And I started writing a blog for myself, but what I started to find out is there was tons of other people out there trying to solve the same problems with Link Server 2010. After writing blogs and getting a lot of views and a lot of interest and actually writing a book, uh, implementing Link, step by step, which eventually was downloaded, I think over a hundred thousand times. And I went to 
Microsoft conferences and people, Microsoft employees would come to me and say, guess what? I learned how to implement Microsoft Link and Microsoft Skype for business server by reading your books. And I thought, wow, um, that's apparently a little bit helpful. And because of that became a Microsoft MVP for Skype for Business, Microsoft Link and Skype for Business. And we were invited to the Link Conference 2013 in San Diego, California. The MVP Summit was right over the same time and they said, why don't you all come down, instead of going to this MVP Summit, we want you all to come down to Link 20, uh, the Link Conference 2013. And as we were at Link 20, uh, Conference 2013, on the keynotes, they were talking about things like, we're eventually going to come out with a mobile client that actually works. Incredible. But what those of us who were already implementing phone system in the real world, what we were doing is we were walking around the exhibit hall, which incidentally wasn't that much smaller than, or was a, a similar size to the one here at Commsverse. And we were roaming around the exhibit hall trying to find solutions to fix the gaps that we were noticing with Link by that time, Link 2013. And uh, other MVPs, other Link experts were, we were walking around putting your heads together. What are the things that you need to really do Link good? And uh, if I'm thinking right, the, ex the expo hall was in the, right in that center area. They were using the big area for the exhibit hall and we were walking around there. And one of the things that I've noticed as I talk to other MVPs and Link experts is an attending console what, what, what customers were really asking for is a, a, a link client that was really efficient to handle voice calling and transfer. And so what I started to do, I and several other of the link MVPs, we were going around to the different vendors who were contact center vendors at the time and saying, you know, what you really need to do is make a client that is a simple to install attendant console because people, that's what they want. They're really looking for Link. Uh, Microsoft had bought a attendant console from a company in Switzerland and they didn't update it and it was getting increasingly buggy and it wasn't working and customers were needing something. And so we went to the, the well-known uh, Link uh, contact center vendors and said, here's an idea, run with it. I, we guarantee you that it's gonna, it'll be something that people want. An attendant console you can just install and it just works. And as we went to the different vendors, the different vendors said, you know what, we're not interested. We already have a contact center. You know, it might, it might take installing five servers and 10 to $20,000, but that's what you've got. But you know, the community wanted something. They wanted something else. And when I went home from that Link Conference 2010, uh, 2013, I went to our team and I said, you know what, I think there's not any vendor that's gonna do this. I really think that we ought to write an attendant console for Link. And I still can remember where I was standing when I talked to our sales manager, Wendell Martin, and we were talking, we were thinking, what's the market size for an attendant console for Link? And we were standing there in our office and we were saying, you know, is it 10? Is it 100? Is it 50? Is it 100? What's the market size for an attendant console? And we weren't 100% sure. So what we decided to do is we're gonna put a part-time programmer on writing an attendant console for Link 2013. And a year later on uh, June 2014, we released Attendant Pro for Microsoft Link. And what I will say is that uh, the market demand for a simple to use attendant console for Microsoft Link was vastly beyond anything that we had projected. Only a few years later, we had customers in 60 countries, over 300 Microsoft partners and thousands of organizations were using our attendant console products for Microsoft Link. And then by that time, it was also Skype for Business. Um, all around the globe. Uh, we were working with Microsoft partners. We had been earlier working with Microsoft partners to help them implement Link, uh, you know, give them technical expertise on how to do it. And only a short time later, 60 countries, 300 Microsoft partners, and thousands of organizations. But over the years, one of the things that we um, really, really, really was a great 
makes our what made our products different than some of the other products in the market were the feedback that we got from the community. Uh, people like the MVPs sitting in this room gave excellent feedback, and actually some of them sitting here may have actually given input. Um, this is actually a booklet showing some of the MVPs at that time, but also experts. You know, we had uh, feedback, things like, uh, you know, what you really need to do is, um, you know, uh, Brian Ricks, MVP Brian Ricks from the USA, he kept dogging us and he said, what you have to do is ha you have it, you can put the panels, you know, the calling control panel anywhere in the app. And he kept dogging us to do that in Attendant Pro. We never got it done, but I want to say that now that we have Microsoft Teams Attendant Console, you can put the panels and design them however you want. Wherever you want to put them, you can put them. Design it like you want. Another MVP from the USA, Jonathan McKinney, he came and said, Matt, we were at the MVP Summit. One evening he came and said, what you got to do, one of the things you got to do is you got to, there's this product called If This Then That. And it's a web service and you can send web calls to it and it'll trigger actions. And I was thinking, that's a really neat idea. And you know, that concept, of course today, it's not if this, then that. In the Microsoft world, it's called Power Automate, or um, yeah, Power Automate. And we have that functionality in all of our products, whether it's our contact center or our attendant console, we have hooks that you can trigger Power Automate items. So feedback is incredibly powerful and has made our products uh, very good. We really feel that in-person events, events like Commsverse, it's one of the reasons we're really glad to be a sponsor here at Commsverse. Uh, we have been at every Microsoft Ignite there was. We just really, that in-person interaction is super powerful. And we really, really would like to encourage that. But you know, 2017 came and a new product was introduced. In 2017, Microsoft Teams was released. And this is a new world. What are we going to do? And the first thing that I said is, we are going to write an attendant console for Microsoft Teams. We're going to be, we're not going to lag in the old world. We're going to go along with what's new and we're committed immediately to writing a con uh, sorry, an attendant console for Microsoft Teams. And based on the input that we've gotten from working with customers from 60 countries and over 300 partners, we've got a lot of expertise fed to us. And we're also going to bring a contact center for Microsoft Team. And we firmly committed to doing that and started immediately. Now, we were kind of thinking maybe in a year or two. And if we had listened a little closer um, to Andy Bybee, the programmer, program manager for ISV partners for Teams, we might have got the hint that it's gonna be a little longer than that. But the APIs were quite a journey. Um, and we were a big proponent of pushing Microsoft to bring the APIs to market that we need. Um, we were uh, campaigning uh, at Ignite, I forget which year it was, we had stickers there that people can go to the feedback forum and vote for the client APIs. And you know, five years later, here we are, and we have the APIs we need to do what we need to do. Now, they're not all 100% GA, but we've got what we need to really, really make a good solution. You know, another thing that has become a tradition at Landis Technologies, and that is the Landis Attendant Console and Contact Center around the world. And, you know, this is kind of a light, maybe a little tacky thing that we do, but I would like to say that there's a serious message behind it. And what the serious message is, is we are intent on bringing our solutions to customers all around the world. Like we said, we have customers in over 60 countries, and we are intent on bringing Microsoft Teams, Attendant Console, and Contact Center to customers all around the world. So what I'd like to say, just to wrap up some of the themes uh, with Landis Technologies, we utilize real world feedback. We facilitate and engage the community. And we believe that users everywhere deserve great solutions. And we wanna fully leverage the value of Microsoft. Um, we don't wanna just plug into it, we wanna fully leverage and make our products make total use of Microsoft Teams. 
So that's just a little bit about Landis Technologies and how we got where we are, and I'm going to hand it back to Paul. All right, thank you, Matt. Fascinating story. I always enjoy hearing that. Um, all right, I'm going to take you through a, a few of the products uh, that, that we offer for Microsoft Teams, and I'm going to touch a little bit on, on kind of our vision behind these products and what we drive for. So there's a few things uh, that, we, that, that you'll notice as themes as we go throughout um, both the attendant console and the contact center. So first of all, simplicity. Simplicity is absolutely first and foremost with the design, with the UI, with how we build our products. It has to be simple. Of course, it has to be simple for the end user, the people that are using the product, uh, but it has to be simple for you guys, the people that are responsible for deploying it, that are managing the deployment, that are hitting deadlines. It needs to be something that can be rolled out easily and quickly and easy to manage. So simplicity is at the forefront of everything we design. Familiar look and feel is also very important. It needs to blend with Microsoft Teams. Uh, you will, you have, or you will be training your users on how to use Microsoft Teams and how to use chat and channels and collaboration. You don't want to have to spend time training them on a completely separate contact center or attendant console platform. So having it blend with the Microsoft Teams client is very important. And then we'll go through and we'll look at some of the other features. Uh, the powerful list of features checks a lot of the boxes, the common request for contact center. Uh, as Matt mentioned, we, we integrate with the rest of the Microsoft environment using Power BI, Power Automate, uh, and most importantly, we're built on uh, a trusted Teams platform uh, and a product that just plugs into your Teams environment and it just works. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the technical side of things, but there's a few things that I think it's important to, pull, uh, to, to highlight as we talk about Landis Contact Center. Um, so first of all, if you're familiar with Microsoft's terminology that they, that they use to describe third-party products, uh, there's Power, there's Extend, there's Connect uh, as different types of third-party integrations. Landis would be on the Power side of things. So that means we're using Microsoft APIs to deliver the functionality right inside of the Teams environment uh, without call traffic leaving your environment, uh, without calls routing uh, externally. Opposed to that would be a connected contact center. And a connected contact center would rely on call traffic routing outside of your environment to a third party server somewhere to deliver the functionality and then routing back into your team's environment. Obviously there's a few more links in the chain as it were with that type of setup. There's a few more um, complexities and just a little bit more difficult to manage overall. Of course, there's latency concerns, audio and all that. So keeping everything inside your environment is very crucial. And just to add some visuals to how that works, your calls come into your environment. They're pointed towards a resource account, uh, a Landis resource account that communicates with our contact center services in Azure. And in turn, it directs the APIs and tells them what to do record the call, um, you know, send the call to this call queue, to this agent, play this welcome message, uh, report on how long the caller waited, all of the analytics and reports that you're looking for. But as you notice, the call comes into your environment and it goes straight to your agents. The call traffic is never leaving your team's environment. Uh, that's good for a lot of reasons. There's the security aspect of that, but also it's just very easy to deploy. Basically, you're plugging in a resource account, you're creating a new contact center um, uh, tenant in, in our service, and you're set up and you're ready to go. So it's incredibly light on the deployment side of things. There's also the recording solution you see down there. We have a recording service that can be stored in our Azure or in your Azure uh, and very easily record your uh, calls, whether it's in your contact center or anywhere else in your team's environment. Right, so let's just take a look at what the product looks like. Um, and I'm going to highlight, uh, you know, a few, uh, a few aspects of it. We'd be happy to give you a more thorough demo uh, upstairs at our, at our booth afterwards. As I mentioned, this is something that should plug in and be a part of the Microsoft Teams client. So here you see an example of an agent's Teams client, and you see a contact center application that sits right within that. Uh, no Landis branding anywhere on the product, and that's, of course, intentional. We want it to feel like it's a part of Teams. If the end users can use Landis Contact Center without realizing it, 
we'll have done our job. We want that integration. We want it to feel like it's part of the team's client. Single sign-on with Microsoft credentials, so there's no other credentials that they need to manage. Uh, of course, that means if your agents are work from home or remote or hybrid work, doesn't matter, they can access the, the product from anywhere. A nice, clean agent panel, and this is all centered around uh, agents taking calls in Microsoft Teams, just like you would have trained them to do. As calls come in through the Landis contacts and queues, it rings to your agents and they answer them using the Teams client like they're familiar with. Um, so the learning curve for an agent is nearly non-existent. But there's a nice agent panel where they can sign in and out of the appropriate call queues that they're responsible for. They can change their status and you can give them a list of statuses that they have to pick from. Uh, and of course, we want the reporting on that. So there's the back end piece where, uh, where managers can report on and see a timeline for their agents. Were they signed into the queue when they said they were and when they should have been? How much time did they spend on break? How many calls have they taken? So of course, you have all the analytics that go with that. Also in the Teams client, a nice CRM integration panel, where as they're inter interacting with their callers, they can see context for the callers that they're speaking with. And this, again, using the power stack from Microsoft, ties in with a variety of different CRMs. Basically, any CRM that Power Apps can integrate with can provision data here in the agent panel for the agents that are taking calls. All right, um, we're gonna highlight a little bit on the manager side of things now. Same experience, same client. Now, as a manager, you see at the top, I have a lot more menu options. Uh, everything is permissions driven within the, the contact center. Um, you have the ability to see both live and historic reporting. So we can see calls that are currently in progress, who's on the phone, calls that are ringing. Uh, we can even see live sentiment for calls that are taking place. There we go. Um, so using cognitive services, we're transcribing calls for the managers to see and also letting the manager know if this call is going well or not. Is, is everything looking good with the sentiment or are there some problems? And of course, managers can then barge in, they can listen to audio, um, they can even pick calls out of queue and take over, send them to themselves. So very capable manager tools for the, us to manage your calls that are in progress. Of course, there's live wall boards that show you, you know, show everyone what's happening in the, in the contact center, uh, total number of calls, what's the longest wait time currently in queue, what you would expect from a traditional wall board. And then a whole plethora of historic reports. And I don't have time to touch on all of them here, um, but a good list of reports that gives you overviews of your cues, your responsiveness, your SLAs, total call volumes, um, how long on average people are waiting. Uh, we can see what time of day, did I skip one there? No, no. Uh, we can see an overview of all of our agents and who's been busy, who's not. Uh, we can see the total call volumes. And again, it's just one click reports that we can easily access. Uh, we can see abandoned calls and calls that are waiting in queue. And you have a whole list of options for offering callers call back while they wait in queue uh, and things like that. So you have a lot of advanced options that Teams queues just doesn't quite get you. Uh, of course, we can gauge our activity at various times a day and, and understand what our problem points are. You know, what are we seeing? Why are we seeing so many abandoned calls? before noon on Thursdays. You know, do we need more staffing? Uh, you have reports that can help you with that. Uh, you have the ability to ask wrap-up questions and give wrap-up time to agents after they have finished a call. And of course, as managers, we want to report on that. We want to know why this month there's a 30% increase in callers asking about this product and wrap-up questions can help us gauge those responses. I already talked about the timeline that allows you to stay on top of your agent activity. And then also a very comprehensive and easy to use IVR designer. We have our own IVR that, that can replace, if you wanted to, can replace Teams Auto Attendant and allows you to easily lay out your contact center IVR call tree, making sure that the responses are right and you can add data dip call routing, text to speech blocks, business hour sets, very easy to manage in a, in, in a visual designer. All right, there's a lot more. Obviously, that was a real quick run through. Um, there's a lot more to Contact Center that we'd love to show you. Uh, obviously, we'd love to give you a more in-depth demo. We're gonna spend a little bit of time now talking about the attendant console. Another gap, and Matt uh, talked a little bit about this. This is ingrained within Landis history is provide, filling this gap for the reception user. Um, the reception user is 
this is advancing on me here. I'll just go back. Sorry about that. The reception user is a, a very critical user in the environment, and they need something that allows them to easily answer and transfer calls. Um, so this here, the, the Lannis Attendant Console is a web application, uh, or it can be a web application. It's also a desktop app, and we're announcing this year that we, we now have a desktop application uh, that is easy to use. Well, let me see if I can pause this here. Sorry about that. Um, let's see if we got it there. So it's designed to fit in with the rest of the, the team's uh, devices, whether it's your room systems, your, the, the, your, your handsets, headsets, the, of course, the team's client, and the attendant console is a natural part of this. And once again, for this user, efficiency is everything. They have a lot of calls coming in, and they need something that can easily allow them to answer and transfer those calls to the desired locations. Uh, and that's what the attendant console focuses on. Um, this product, like the contact center, can be plugged in in literally minutes. Um, so you, you can go, you grant permissions for the product to operate in your environment, you sign in, and your users are ready to go. And once again, we're not taking any of your call traffic out of the environment. Everything stays in, whether it's your address book, your calendars, your, the calls themselves. Everything is contained within your team's tenant. Uh, and nothing is leaving that. So it makes it a very secure product and, of course, very easy to deploy. Uh, it is something that can easily be added uh, or, or in a variety of different devices. And once again, uh, as you have users that may be operating from the house um, or, or operating from home, uh, you can, whether it's on a touchscreen device or anything like that, it's, it's very easy to become accustomed to. So here's a, an example of a call coming in. We're going to answer it. And we're going to click on where we want the call to go, and the call is transferred. Um, the complaint is often with, with uh, contacts or with uh, the team's native attendant console. It's not quite that easy. There's a lot more, lot more to it. There's drop-down menus. There's right-click. There's a lot more clicks that are involved with, um, you know, with transferring a call. All right. Um, just to highlight. Um, let me just step back here and highlight uh, a few things on the attendant console before we, before we wrap up. Um, this is something that, uh, as I mentioned, we, we provide, it's not required, you're not required to purchase contact center to get the attendant console. It's a standalone product uh, that we're happy to offer on its own. These are the core products uh, that, we, uh, that we offer for Microsoft Teams. We talked about the contact center the recording solution, and the attendant console. And part of our simplicity um, is making no bones about the, let me just pause this here, making no bones about the pricing and making sure that everyone knows what they're in for at the start of a project. Uh, contact center projects, attendant console, can become very out of reach. They can become very complex, in-depth. You have add-ons, you have other additional services, you have deployment fees. Uh, support costs, different tiered pricing, and soon the number that you see on paper can be vastly out of reach. These are the prices for our products. This is what you can expect to pay. There's no deployment fees. There are no uh, supporters included with these fees. Um, it's simply a monthly subscription for your users that need access to the service. So uh, it doesn't matter what size company you are. It's something that's very easy to plug in for the users that need it. You can scale, there's no contracts required. It can be a month to month um, agreement where you, you just use it as long as you need it. You can add users, you can, you know, if you have seasonal help, you can reduce users. Um, so it's very easy to deploy and very easy to know what your costs are upfront. All right, uh, that was a very quick overview on both the contact center and the attendant console. Um, is there any, I'm going to pause just for a moment here. Are there any questions that I can answer from anyone? We have a, a little mic here, so if you have a question, just raise your hand uh, and we'll uh, throw you the mic and got one right back there. Just hold it in your lap and, and talk normally and it'll pick up on it. Yeah, the contact center, have you got omnichannel for it as well or is it just voiceover? That's a great question. So as of right now, you'll notice uh, that the contact center functionality is mostly voice focused. Um, I say right now because there's active development work in place to move to multi-channel. That's certainly on our roadmap, uh, and I would say it's on our near roadmap. 
Uh, some of the things that we're working on, obviously chat is, is important, uh, whether it's WhatsApp or SMS, you know, the chat channel or web chat. Uh, also email management. You know, how are we going to manage the emails that are coming in, making sure they're assigned to agents and all that. So um, yes, there's more coming as of right now, voice only. Right here. Yes, yes, great question. Skills-based routing is a part of the platform. Um, so you have the ability to assign various skills to your agents, and as calls flow in, it would determine, you know, so there's skills-based routing, there's longest idle, there's parallel ring, there's a common serial round robin. Um, you can also have longest idle among agents with similar skills. Um, so it allows you to really set up a comprehensive order in which the agents are alerted and, and make sure that it works for everyone. Great questions. Any other questions? All right. Pretty good. Uh, I have uh, just a, a few more thoughts to, to get you out of here. I know they're serving lunch upstairs, so I want to share just a couple of stories. M.M. Weaver, uh, as Matt said, we're based in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. M.M. Uh, Weaver is a, a farm company uh, that is just down the road from us. We've known them for years. Uh, they're not a large company at all. You're looking at it right there. Uh, they sell uh, and, and rent farm equipment to, to local farmers. They had a few ladies that sat at the front desk that managed all their incoming calls. And as M.M. Weaver went to Teams, the re response was not, was not enthusiastic from the people answering the phones and transferring. They, they felt like they didn't have a good option for uh, answering and transferring calls, they were making mistakes with transfer, they needed a better solution, and they were able to plug in uh, the Landis Attendant Console for those users, and they were good to go. Uh, it allowed them to easily answer and transfer calls uh, just like they were used to doing. Dirturistic Swiss is another company uh, that is, and some of the guys from Dirturistic are here, I'm not sure if they're in the session that they're here at the Commsverse. They're a company that I got to know over the last six months. Uh, they're a travel agency, a travel company uh, located in Switzerland. They have a, and as, as the travel industry uh, roared back, I would say, from a, after COVID, they needed a contact center that they could quickly plug in to provide insights for their agents that were now working from home. Uh, and so Dirturistic rolled out Landis Contact Center. They were able to do it in the, in the span of a month or so, rolled it out to all their agents uh, and get, you know, look for the, those insights that they had for agents that were operating remotely to make sure that calls were being handled uh, the way they should be. Sanofi is a, a French multinational pharmaceutical company uh, doing a lot of great things with over-the-counter meds and, and certain projects that they're working on. We've worked with Sanofi for years. Uh, they started working with us, uh, the Attendant Pro product that, Link, uh, that uh, Matt talked about for uh, Link and Skype for Business. Uh, they deployed that, and then as they moved their entire operation to Teams, uh, they needed an attendant console for their main reception users around the world that were answering and transferring calls to the appropriate department. So they rolled out a tenant console for Teams. After seeing that project, they came back to us and said, this plug and play works pretty well. It's easy for us to roll out globally. They started talking about contact center and now we're in the process of implementing contact center for their different contact center teams globally. Um, so there's more stories than that. You kind of get the idea. The point being, there's a, there's a lot of different organizations represented here uh, at Commsverse, here in this room. Uh, it, it doesn't matter whether you're an M.M. Weaver of the world, it doesn't matter whether you're a Sanofi. The, the simplicity and the ease of use of either the attendant console or the contact center, um, it, it can be plugged into your environment. And I know these projects look or can look very daunting as you're on the forefront of them and you're responsible for finding solutions. Um, but regardless of what your company size are, what your needs are, uh, we can help you fill those gaps in teams and get, get things in place and uh, get everything set up and ready to go for you. So uh, free, free trials are available for all our products, so we, we welcome you to try them out, see what you think, offer feedback, uh, ask questions. We will have our team upstairs at the booth, uh, and we're ha happy to give you a more comprehensive demo and answer any questions. Thanks again, everyone, for coming out. We really appreciate your time. Thanks for being here. Can I just get a bigger round of applause, please? Because that was rubbish. Round of applause for Matt and for Paul of Landis. Yes!
Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Oh, right. Here we go. Something to uh, something to get excited about here. Just before your lunch. I know everybody's hungry. I'm hungry. Anyone hungry? Show your hands. Did anyone see the Stig walk in and sit down? I wasn't going nuts, was I? Okay, that's fine. Right. If you could go to swagit.io.